just goes. <laughs> and then she, I, I ask her when she's coming back, and her answer is very definitely, I don't know. <laughs> I always like yeah. Sally a lot. Yeah, she's <laughs> Where are we, Norman? Boy, if he's here in two minutes, he'll break a politician's record. The deal is they're going to stay in the car, they're going to close the door, get you in position. President so George nice Mason. to see you. Thank you for having us. Welcome, sir. You're very good. good to have good. you How here. How long have you been president? Ten years and ten years. Outstanding. Well, it's great to see you. Great opportunity. It's good uh, to have you with us. Uh, what's, what's the student body here? 30,000. Uh, That's up, big. We I were, didn't realize we were, were 23,000 10 years ago. We're 30,000 now. Did you get more uh, recruits after uh, uh, after yes, your run yeah, on the, on, uh, the, yeah, we, the final we're, uh, four? We're up 50 percent. Uh, That's unbelievable. Applicants. We're up 30 percent overall. Uh, it, yeah, it's uh, so, it was, nothing it, like basketball. It was, I, it, I had great months in my life, but never there. That was that was a good. One. You're gonna meet the coach in a minute. Oh, good. good. I look forward to this guy. Is. How, How are you, sir? Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. I appreciate it. Right. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, go wander through the door here, and I'm good. Coach is here and his wife and. My son and wife. Oh, so I got a family. This is my wife, Sally. Oh, what a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming out here today. This is exciting. Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And this is my son, Eric. So Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Nice to meet you. How are you? Welcome, very well. Thank you. What kind of work do you do? I'm a government contractor. Homeland security works. I'm very interested in your kids. They love homeland security. I'm all submitted. I know. That's how you live. That's why he's here. And this is Liz Larinaga. She's not the basketball coach. She's the basketball coach. That's why he's here. Welcome. Happy to have you here. And this is Jim Larinaga. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What a wonderful you as well. What a wonderful year you guys had. Thank you. First thing is, I don't know if it affected our applications. I said we're only up 50%. Out of yeah. Well, you know, my brother in law is uh, the head coach at Brown. He just uh, started. He was assistant coach at Northwestern. And then, and then uh, what's his name? Uh, Craig Robinson. Oh, yeah. He used to play at Princeton. Yeah. And uh, so Brown still hasn't quite invested. But one of the things he's trying to persuade them is, you know, it actually has an impact. It oh, uh, certainly does. Yeah. We'd be glad to talk to him. I mean, if, if we're we're an example of it having an impact. You know, but you know these Ivy Leagues, they get all... I was at Cornell for a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, we can't look like we're in a secure course. We can't look like we're in a secure course. Like we like we <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, um, if we can get more people involved in, in politics, uh, the better off we're going to be. You said you didn't want you? your bitch to come to you. So nice to see you. Good, good. How are you? We need good. Good to see you. How are you? Hi. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm going fine. Good to see you. All right. Hey, Chad. Hey. 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 Welcome. How's everybody doing? Fine. Welcome. Good to see you. How are you? Good. Are you guys all right? We're all for you. You all work here? We're here. Good to see you, too. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Which way are we going? Maybe it's the same as Joe. There's always a little bit of curve. Which is shown. 
that is all about slash and burn, uh, uh, nastiness and negative ads. And so you guys don't have much of a memory of the possibilities of a politics that transcends and brings people together. But here's what I told people when I first ran for office, and it's something that I still say today. And that is that there's always been a running thread in American history of a different kind of politics. A politics... Uh, that's based on a very simple idea that we are all connected as a people. That we all have a stake in each other. That, we're, that we have mutual responsibilities for each other. Uh, that I am my brother's keeper. And I am my sister's keeper. And yes, we value our individual liberty and we love our, our individualism and, and, and the lack of conformity that's allowed in this culture, but what we've also always valued is a sense of community uh, and a belief that uh, if, in the words of Dr. King, if there's an injustice anywhere, then it's a threat to justice everywhere. And that's the spirit, uh, that's the spirit uh, of the kind of politics I've tried to practice in the state legislature, the kind of politics that I've tried to practice in the United States Senate, uh, and the kind of practice, uh, the kind of politics that uh, I hope to be engaged in uh, in a campaign over the next year. It's going to be you that makes the decision that you want to see a transformation, not just in this country, but around the world. And and Lord knows we need that transformation. Because we are at a crossroads in this country domestically and we're at a crossroads internationally. Uh, And I don't have to give you all the facts. Uh, You see them on television, you read about them every day. We've got uh, a health care system that is broken. And many of you may be on health care here at school, maybe on your parents' health care, but uh, particularly young people, once they enter the job market, discover that it's not so easy uh, getting health care. And if you get sick, it can potentially bankrupt you. And then imagine if you're a mother or a father that doesn't have health care and you see your child get sick and you've got to take them to the emergency room and they, and they turn you away because you don't have health insurance. Been there, and a lot of people have. And you wonder why is it that we can't do something about that? It's not a technical problem. It's not that we don't spend enough money on health care, it's that we have not exerted the political will to transform the system so that everybody has basic, decent health care. You know the cost of higher education. You understand that in the midst of globalization, you need a college education and beyond if you're going to be able to compete not just against folks in California or Texas, but folks in Beijing or or Bangalore. Uh, And yet, what does Congress do? Instead of making student loans cheaper, they make them more expensive. Instead of cutting out the middleman so that young people can have access to more education, uh, we continue to fatten the profits of banks who serve as middlemen for no purpose because of the politics of Washington. Uh, People understand that our education system, for many people, is broken. And there are young people just as talented as you 
just as deserving of you all across the country that never get a shot. Yeah. That start off in schools that are broken down with inadequate textbooks and racks on number of computers. This generation more than anybody understands that uh, unless we have a serious energy policy, we may not have a future. That not only does it cripple our economy, not only does it threaten our national security, but it actually threatens the very well-being of our planet. And so you look at that and you say, well, why, why can't we do something about that? Why can't we make a difference? And the answer is you can. You know, I wrote a book uh, titled The Audacity of Hope. And, and some people ask me, some, some folks ask me, where did I get the title? And I told them I actually got the title from my pastor uh, in Chicago named Dr. Jeremiah A. Wright Jr. And I did not, I did not grow up in a church. But when I was a community organizer, that's when I joined this church. And I walked in one day and he gave a sermon titled The Audacity of Hope. And the idea that he offered was very simple. He said, you know, the easiest thing to do in life is to be cynical. The easiest thing to do in life is to say nothing's going to change. You can't make a difference. The world is as it is. You look around, you see famine and poverty and despair and cruelty and injustice. There's nothing we can do about it. But here, here was the idea. He said, what's truly audacious, what requires risk, and boldness and courage is, is hope. The belief that in fact the world as it is is not the world as it has to be. At each and every juncture of our history, uh, somebody's been audacious enough to say, we can do something different. And more often than not, it's been young people who've done it. When a Vietnam War was being fought that people realized made no sense, and was destroying our credibility in the world, it was young people who stood up and said, enough. And when Jim Crow still was the law of the land in half of this nation, it was young people who got on buses and went down south to register voters in the park. And the same thing is true today. It hasn't changed. We have a war today, in which we should have never waged it, and our leaders don't know how to end it, and I was against it, and you need to help stop it. Young people have to get involved. We, we have an economy that is serving the few, but not the many, and it's going to be a legacy of debt and decline unless we make some difficult decisions around issues like health care and making sure that our prosperity is spread all throughout the economy, it's not going to change unless young people change it. We've got, we've got a problem of climate change that uh, may be more threatening to our civilization than anything in my lifetime or your lifetime, and you are going to have to deal with it. And if we don't deal with it right now, it may not be something that we can deal with. But it's only going to happen if you decide it's going to change, and we can reverse these trends. And so, and, and so what I'm hoping uh, that all of you take from today uh, is not that you went to a fun rally, although this was fun. Uh, it, it's not that you went to hear a politician speak, uh, but rather that it made you question and ask yourself, what is it that you can do uh, to make this country and this world better? Uh, and if you ask yourself that question, if, if, if you feel inside yourself this, this confidence, this trust uh, in your capacity to put your shoulder to the wheel and change history, uh, then I'm absolutely confident that uh, America will change and it will change for the better. I'm absolutely confident of it. But, but 
Thank you so much, everybody.